Welcome back to This Is Van Color. We're gonna wrap things up tonight with my friend, a political commentator and YouTuber based right here in Vancouver with nearly a million subscribers. He is JJ McCullough, and this is The Crunch. So JJ, we just heard from BC Conservative leader John Rustad. You sat in on that interview. I mean, he's clearly shaking things up when it comes to polling, or at least the BC Conservatives are. How palatable is the BC Conservative Party? Because I look at things like the carbon tax and, and SOGI and think that, you know, they're not really going to make a lot of headway in the cities. Yeah, I mean, I was personally a little underwhelmed by that interview, I must say. I mean, I think that he seems like a, a decent I, guy. I take that personally, by the way. Thank <laughs> no, you. No, not, not. <laughs> he, he seems like an intelligent, sort of well-informed guy. He actually seems like a real throwback politician to a sort of politician that you saw, I think, a lot in the 90s, sort right. of critiquing the NDP government and has sort of adapted those criticisms to now, uh, well, I guess, to bring to the current NDP government. Yeah, I right? don't think calling anyone socialist has the same. I know, but he did it. Does. Yeah, that's true. But I, I think, but anyway, to get to your question, I do think that uh, what we see from that interview suggests that the strength of the BC party is not necessarily that John Rustad is sort of catching the province on fire. It's that I think that the strength of the BC conservative brand has risen a lot. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. I think that, you know, Pierre Polyev has, you know, is very popular. I think a lot of people are excited within sort of the conservative coalition to vote conservative. And I think they just want to vote for anything that's labeled conservative that comes in. Even though he said in the interview, he's not conservative, yeah, liberal, which is, or NDP. Which is a weird <laughs> thing to say unto itself. And again, like very sort of 90s, like, well, you know, we have to have a big coalition. And, and the idea that he's you know, they say in the reporting and all that, that he's open to, you know, perhaps merging with the BC United Party and this kind of stuff. So it's it's again, like it's just it's not about him. And I think that he's not an overly charismatic person. I don't think that your average British Columbian has any idea who he is. But I do think that the fact that the media is talking about the BC Conservatives a lot more because I think that he is impressive in a way that appeals to people like you, frankly, who know a lot Nerds. about BC. Yeah, well, sort of the nerdy <laughs> BC politics kind of type of person. Sure. Right? And I think that makes people like you take him a bit more seriously in a way that previous heads of the BC Conservative Party have not been taken seriously. So I think that there's just and I think that, frankly, the decision for the BC Liberals to rebrand as BC United was a disastrous. Sure. Like, Will this actually result in votes for the BC Conservatives once we get to October? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, I think that at the end of the day, sort of BC political nerds like yourself and like the leader have a presumption that. Uh, your average BC voter has like a very long uh, understanding of BC political history. Right, yeah. Well, I, so I think that like increasingly <laughs> in the kind of the media uh, climate that we exist in today, like everybody is pretty much coming in cold to these elections, right? Like I think that your average British Columbian can barely remember who like say Christy Clark was. Sure, like yeah. that is like a distant figure. So I think that they're coming to this election with a sort of a clean sort of frame of reference. They don't know who the current premier is. They just know that we've got an NDP, we've got a conservative, we've got something called BC United. Never heard of that. So I think that, you know, he benefits from, you know, a public that's not terribly plugged in and two very strong uh, party brands, NDP, which, you know, a lot of people in this province like, you know, like you said, you know, mm -hmm. we have a very sort of Vancouver sort of centric population these days. Over half the population is in the greater Vancouver sure. area. And then you have the conservative brand, which is a very strong brand as well. And a very strong brand with people that, you know, they might not know a lot about politics, but they know that they don't like the NDP. They don't like the left. They don't like what they've seen the left doing in a kind of broad national or transnational sort of way. And so if they want to vote for something that's not NDP, they have a very clear and 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 well understood alternative. When we think of British Columbia as a whole, does our province lean one way or the other? Because I've certainly heard us being called the left coast. We're a little more quote unquote liberal, small L liberal. But then you see this surge for the federal conservatives here and, and certainly the, the provincial conservatives. So where would you kind of put BC on the political spectrum? I mean, I think that we're probably more left wing than not. I mean, but, you know, at the same time, when you look federally, a third of our seats in the parliament do go to the conservatives. The thing about this country is that our provinces are so gigantic, right? Yeah. So it's like if this was a if we were in the states, you know, British Columbia would be multiple states and there would be like some quite conservative states that would be a component part of that. Mm. And I think that once you get outside of, you know, the greater Vancouver area you and you get into sort of the north and the interior and more rural parts of the province, you do come into a completely different culture that people like you and me, sort of downtown Vancouver uh, hipsters, just, sure. don't, <laughs> just don't really think about very much. And so I think that there is a degree to which, you know, the strength of the BC conservatives 
comes from a kind of consistently rural right wing sort of voter block that votes conservative federally and is responsible for a lot of the conservative members that we have in, in Ottawa. And, you know, used to be the backbone of the of the uh, of the social credit party and then kept the B.C. liberals. And frankly, it's like the backbone of the B.C. liberal party now sure, because yeah. they're very much shut out of the greater Vancouver area. So but you're just making it sound like there's a ceiling to a party that's labeled exclusively as conservative. Yeah, I think that's true. Like, okay. I think that the conservatives have a very particular base. You know, the conservatives, I, I suppose we should say, like the right of center sort of block of voters in B.C. It has it has a base. It has a ceiling. And I think that the challenge for, you know, guys like John Rustad and, and other sort of center right politicians in this province, it's like, do you have a strategy to kind of like expand that base? Mm. Can you make arguments that are appealing to people that are not already inclined to vote for you? And frankly, I don't think that he's a politician that has those skills. Uh, in the way that I think somebody like Pierre Polyev at the federal level does, because he's a little bit, you know, Pierre is more charismatic, more outgoing, and has more of an interest in trying to, like, make inroads in new communities. I could see John, you know, doing well with this sort of, you know, taking away votes from BC liberals and sort of unseating some BC liberal MLAs, but in, again, parts of the province where you do kind of have a more consistently right of center leaning population. So in the same way that they switch from social credit to BC liberal, you can see them now switching from BC Liberal, from BC United to BC Conservative, just because that's now what conservatives do. Fascinating. JJ, I appreciate your time tonight. I'm not sure if Mr. Rustad will, but <laughs> thank you so much. No problem. Folks, that's our show. Thank you to JJ McCullough and BC Conservative leader John Rustad for their time tonight. We will be back next week for episode 100 here on Check. I promise it'll be full of surprises. In the meantime, please follow me on X or TikTok at Van Keller. Of course, this is Van Keller and I'm Mo Amir telling you that in a province where you can be anything, be colorful. Peace. <laughs>